All right, it's a Tech Thursday now in the light of a recent development with a cryptocurrency in Nigeria. We have program developer Oluwashegun Kosemani who has joined us to discuss the current state and the future of cryptocurrency in Nigeria. It's great to have you. You're welcome. Hi. You All right, so um, everybody knows about the, so the, the ban as it is on cryptocurrency. Just as a baseline for people that don't really understand, let's just talk about it just very fast. What exactly do, does that ban, in quote, entail? Um, bad business for the country, okay. less revenue for the government, um, young people are discouraged, mm. and also in, in, in the positive um, light, I think it's a wake-up call, okay. free advert for cryptocurrency, uh, mm. it's more like a, an opportunity to regulate and for the players in the crypto space to come together and really um, take Nigeria to the next level when how, it comes to digital. How money. can that happen, considering that there is now an official this, um, uh, you know, statement or official policy not to uh, trade in cryptocurrency? How can that happen? Okay, so this, uh, um, if you are uh, informed a little bit, you know that it has happened before in 2017. Mm. And uh, again, it's just been reinforced. So I think this is the best time now that um, uh, what the CBN should have done or what they can do now is just to call the players together like myself from Bought Me Cash uh, and from several crypto platforms, um, try and engage us. We can enlighten, educate them and, uh, and let them see how if lots that of revenue happen, can come into the country. What can legally happen? What, what is legally, what is the state now? If you have cryptocurrency case, can you convert it to cash? What is the state of things now at the moment? Um, big um, to be precise, Bitcoin, which is on top of the food chain, is now mm. trading at a 36% all-time high in Nigeria. Okay. That means to get one Bitcoin, which is like $52,000, uh, you might need 30 million plus. Uh, it, it has now been erupted. It's more popular amongst young people and even older generation. Um, people are really converting their Bitcoin to cash. They're not just trading um uh, um, around the banks, like on our platform, we, we, we don't, we usually were married to the banks um, via payment processes. But now, um, what we do is P2P, which is peer to peer. Trust me, me um, the transaction has gone up, volumes have gone up, and it's happening. The only thing the government can do is to call people together and say, okay, we need to start to generate revenue from this. How can we? So now, what I, what I mean now, what I want to ask now is that if somebody has a Bitcoin, considering that, this, that, um, that policy says you should not trading it. Are you saying that you, you can't get it to the banks until you want to collect cash for it? Okay, so um, that policy affects the banks, not the individual. Okay. Uh, from what I understand, I mean, yeah, okay. legal advice from my lawyers and, uh, of course, my lawyer, and, mm. of course, how the in space works. You cannot ban crypto. Neither can you ban Bitcoin, which is on top of the food chain. Mm. Um, that policy simply affects the banks directly. Of course, the banks can do crypto, but then payment processor can help convert Bitcoin to cash. What are you really converting? The fiat, basically. Mm. So what we have done um, from the software angle is to integrate our codes, our algorithms with that of payment companies. Mm. So when Bitcoin is converted, you take your fiat faster. Fiat are the legal tenders of any country. For example, Naira, dollar pounds, mm. cities, um, etc., RMB, rands. Mm. So what you have done to Nigeria is you've made it difficult for you to maybe be on Botme Cash, for example, and you want to convert $1,000 worth of Bitcoin to cash, which would have been just a few seconds, and you have it in your uh, Naira account and you can spend anywhere. But now what you have to do is to do peer-to-peer, -peer. send to somebody who will willingly just send cash to you without um, it happening on the platform. So has there been, for now, has there been any sort of official um, sort of... Uh uh, a discussion with the government. What's the state? Is there anything that is happening with uh, the financial regulators and the government to, let's say, revert uh, or reverse this uh, policy? Um, uh, I'm of the school of thought that that's about to happen because the CBN government has been summoned by the Senate. Um, I don't want to mention names, but I'm in yeah. close contact with some of, of the senators on the floor that made um, that pronunciation. Uh, I'm aware that some people in Lagos State wants to start talking about it. Lagos State House of Assembly may, may, may start to open up that conversation. I expect a public hearing to come up and they allow people like us be at the forefront so we can really um, uh, put our finger on top of it. I'll tell you what. This is what I expect the committee um, that has been given two weeks to go get. You know, Nigerian government, we like committees a lot. Mm. So um, I expect that the feedback should sound like this. Um, let's set up a cryptocurrency digital asset and um, 
whatever national agency, like a national agency for cryptocurrency and digital assets. Mm. Where are the players, the big players like us who have an exchange platform? We are, we, I say we are more than a bank, but we're not rivalry with a bank. But then uh, you say, how many are you guys? 20, 30, 40? Like you bail out banks when they have issues. What I expect Nigerian government to do and what we're advising them to do, in my own words, I think I'm speaking for some um, smart people in my industry, is to say this is $5 billion. Uh, we need FX in our country. Why don't you go around the world, shop for Bitcoin everywhere? Every time you shop for Bitcoin, you have FX. Mm. You see, and, and we crash the market in Africa. That way, we're in business. Nigeria putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet on our balance sheet, we pay, we pay, off our, pay off our debts in a short period of time. You can see what happened to Tesla. Mm. In the history of about 15 years, over a decade, that Tesla's been selling cars. They made, they made almost double or even triple of their um, 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 revenue in just about a month of buying $1.5 billion. Just imagine a state government in Nigeria doing that. Just imagine Ministry of Finance saying, you know what, uh, there's $10 billion. Where are the Bitcoin players? Uh, Bitcoin funds or crypto funds for mm -hmm. young people in school. This is so major. I, I don't think it's something, you cannot erase the internet. Neither can you re erase digital. Now, money. the fears of the government before this came in, of course, had to do with fraud and all of that, which, you know, um, is there any way can be regulated in such a way that uh, these fears can be allayed? Okay, first of all, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a decentralized um, um, currency, a virtual currency, right? Used for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, payments, built on blockchain technology. What is blockchain? Blockchain technology is basically like a, a decentralized distributed ledger, uh, oftentimes public, uh, of course, uh, uh, to record uh, transactions. They're called blocks. And basically, these blocks cannot be moved until other blocks are uh, altered too. So uh, 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 you can't really alter the transaction of Bitcoin and blockchain. Mm. So in, in, in my head, I, I, I think the decentralization of Bitcoin as, as and, and, and cryptocurrency in general has made it um, uh, a use of value, a way of life. So uh, there is uh, the, the best thing you can do right now is to start to see how you can uh, harness the positivity around cryptocurrency. You, for example, I can, I can pay for bread with Bitcoin now and she will receive Fiat or he will receive Fiat. The Suya guy at the bus stop, if he has a POS, I can just swipe with my Bitcoin card. It's happening in, in, in Nigeria now. Uh, of course, you know, that marriage has been cut off by the banks. So mm. it's already happening. You can walk into ShopRite and cash out Bitcoin without the person knowing that you're transacting with Bitcoin. And it's not fraud. Mm. Uh, Naira, dollar, currencies of the world are used for illicit purposes. Cryptocurrency transactions are already, uh, of course, they use the method called cryptography, which is like a secretive way of transacting stuff. And, 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 and just imagine the transactions you don't see, you're already having a perception that those transactions are fraudulent. The ones that are fraudulent and are visible that we know have not even been um, uh, uh, um, dealt with. Checked, okay. So, so uh, uh, right. uh, to, to, to cap this, I will tell you that um, uh, cryptocurrency, yes, some people are using it for negativity, but the large market, 90% of the people using cryptocurrency is for transactions, uh, payments, and what have you, all, all right. sorts of positive things. All right, thank you. I wish we had more time to talk about that, but hey, uh, thank you for enlightening us. Okay, all right, that's it. That's it on tech. And uh, of course, this is something an ever continuing conversation on how, um, you know, the government policy and how we can, uh, you know, what we can do if you do own cryptocurrency and moving forward. We'll take this time out now and we get back to the final guest of the day.